Hey everybody, I thought uh, some folks might enjoy seeing what's inside my shop, what's uh, necessary for day-to-day -day operations here, what I got close at hand and I might be using. Um, so here we go, where else to start but at the bench. Pretty self-explanatory, trying to keep all the tools I need uh, within reach. Pliers, obviously. Getting components in and out, all the screwdrivers for opening things, wire strippers, all of that. Of course, a soldering iron. Um, that weller is awesome. I got that like four years ago. I've been using it for hours every day since, and it's just going strong. Of course, you got your little solder accessories, scrubby and the flux, and uh... oh my god, the wick, this guy. So you need that, and then solder, and an old spool of wick. Uh, I stole that from somebody who uh, probably stole it from somebody else. And then maybe one thing you wouldn't think of is all these alligator clips. I use those a lot. They're great for making a ground connection from your uh, multimeter to a chassis, so you can have a, a reference point. They're great for testing out different component values or swapping in and out parts. Uh, Recently used it to find a bad signal cap and some solid state amps uh, that have lots of little electrolytic caps or, you know, that pass signal. So great to just jumper around those and when you get signal again, you know, you're good. So sometimes I'll use a bunch of those for one amp or if I got something else crazy going on, uh, sometimes you got to make interesting connections. And I got the uh, old 5F1 chassis, the first amp I ever put together which is now holding my speaker cable. You can see that quarter inch jack just holds my speaker cable, it goes to my test cabinet, so that's easy to find. And a little more out of reach, got a lot of electrolytic caps on the left. Most of your tube amp values are there, pretty much all of them, I mean, any fender value, Marshall value, even got some of the cap cans and some boxes up there. Resistors, half watt, one watt, two watt, most everything tube amp, Marshall pots, random transformers, box of parts. Sometimes I'll have to go looking for something for a little project and they might be in that box. And some other mainstays, we got the oscilloscope and the signal generator. Don't use those as much as you might think. The best thing really you know, to test an amp is a guitar in your ears and usually you could find the problem out that way but it's uh, useful sometimes. Great for tracking down weird noises, uh, at least the, the scope is. We got some other amps, one I just finished, the Music Man, the 140's mine, that's great for testing pedals, tape echoes, great for seeing um, how preamp and power amp outs are working. And this is my test cabinet. This old Unibox combo amp, actually it was a 100 watt combo, 412, <laughs> but the uh, amp's not in there anymore, but I've got two sets of 212s. So the top is 16 ohms, bottom is 4 ohms, at around 300 watts uh, a pair, so I can put about anything through there, you know, I could put an SVT through the 4 ohm one, at least for a little while, as long as I wasn't blaring it, and everything would be copacetic. And my own cabs back there are both 8 ohm. So I have everything within reach if I need to test something. Got something cool right here. 150 watt soldering iron. So if you've ever tried to restore a chassis ground on a fender amp and uh, your iron didn't get hot enough, it's because you needed one of those. Again, don't use that all the time, but when you need it, it's the only thing that's going to get the job done. Dead reverb tank wall happens a lot. They're cheap, so if it's not a simple thing, just replace it and you know, look good on the wall. Table saw. I've been getting into woodworking a little bit, making some calves and some shells, and uh, it's coming handy. I've remade some baffles. I made a shell for an Echoplex that the original was was toast. It was moldy and gross, so it's coming handy having that. And of course, some scrap wood and stuff. And maybe a little less common. <laughs> Got two 360s at the moment. Well, the one on the right's not really a 360, but that's a long story. 
uh, and it belongs to the guys in Chess Fever, which if you're into the band, they're the continuation of the band, and they tour a lot. They're hard, hard working, and this thing's been gigged. I fixed it up for them last year, and then they gigged super hard with it, and so it's back for some love. And then on the one on the left was mine, but it's spoken for um, by a pretty big band, actually, who haven't given me permission to use their name, so uh, you might just want to guess on that one. We got the bass six, of course. We're testing out bass amps. Line six spider actually just came in. I normally wouldn't take things like this, modeling or digital or anything, but it really sounds like it's just a bad connection. So hopefully that'll be a, a win for me and the customer. Now this, that's something fun. I'll have to make another video about that. There's the original foot switch. For the 360, which I've seen a bunch of 360s, never had the original foot switch before, so I'm pretty stoked on that. Some other woodworking stuff, drill press, router table, project strat that I think has no bridge and a stripped uh, truss rod. So if you want a cheap project at your local, hit me up. And I got this hot rod right now, of course, see a lot of those. Um, pretty popular, always having issues. After you fix them up, they're super reliable. This one belongs to Zach Oakley, who's a little San Diego legend. Uh, was in Joy. If you're into psych rock, check him out. Uh, but now he's been out a lot of solo stuff. I just recently saw him open for Earthless at the Casbah, the Casbah uh, anniversary shows. So that was awesome. More woodworking stuff, random parts, some speakers that I think are dead and some are good, and then another project and some mandolin. Saved it from being thrown out years ago. Still haven't done anything with it yet. Uh, I think I got some random things done. Random bass amp carving that someone didn't want to pay to have fixed and left it here. Rack mount synthesizer, same thing. I'll have a garage sale one of these days. And I got all the tubes that I could need at least for a little while. I don't stock up like crazy on tubes because it's just that's throwing a lot of money into a stock but I could probably last a while here it just depends on what comes in full set of 6L6 full set of EL34 some 6V6 all your rectifiers except for 5Y3 looks like I gotta order one and then you got your 12AX7 12AT7 some Mesa EL34 is right there some random stuff that's probably mine yeah it's like 5881's in one of those and probably something that's microphonic in another just for personal use. Lots of little parts, all your jacks, random nuts. Use that a lot. Heat shrink tube wrap. That's good for stuff. More little parts, fender pots, other jacks, little terminal strips. About to use some of those to recap a trainer. Those are really handy when doing stuff like oddball recaps or cap cans and stuff where it's easier just to put some of those in and, and figure out a new way of things going together. AC cords on the left, obviously do a lot of that old three prong conversions or ratty tatty cords that need to uh, be replaced. Random collection of liquids. Deoxid for your fader, grease is good for keyboards, Loctite, all that stuff. Heat sink compound, glue, other glue. Ooh, Q-tips. I go through a lot of those. Great for cleaning out jacks, tube sockets, just general cleaning and grime, getting in small places. Got some prototype amps I'm working on right now. I haven't been doing that too much, uh, but I will be getting back to that, including some uh, little homemade cabinet and a homemade shell there. Still working on those. Now the dead speaker wall. So except for the big 15 on the left, the big 18 in the middle, and then that orange 15, these are all taken from vintage Gibsons. I don't know what it was about those amps or these speakers, but they, you get a vintage Gibson, you probably have a blown speaker. It's, it's nuts. Every one of them, I think except for one, and I've seen dozens, have has had a bad speaker in it. I think maybe because they're neglected, they dry out, something like that. Speakers do like to move. 
Got my small electrolytic caps, all your solid state values, including some other bigger values what kind of uncommon, like snap can size, some transistors, all of my fuses, like specialty stuff, Zener diodes dir directly for uh, hot rods. Got a bunch of those because you always need to replace those. Big resistors, your 5 watt, 10 watt. Probably have too many 10 watts, but uh, whatever, they're not going bad sitting there. Weirdo tubes. Cool RCA box. Yeah, lots of random stuff in there. Test reverb tanks for Hot Rod Deluxe or Fenders or other solid state things. Always good to have a bunch of test tanks so you can check if you're not getting reverb just from a tank. Makes it really easy to swap it in. Tape echo parts, random parts, screws, grommets, things like that. Old transformers, uh, I think taken from that Unibox amp from the 412. Uh, great to have an output transformer that's really big uh, lying around because you can test it for a bad output transformer just by clipping it in with those clips I showed you and figure out what the issue is. My amps, which uh, spend you know less time with me than other people's amps, but that's how it goes. Oh, and of course, test guitar. Put this together during lockdown years ago and it's great, it's just lightweight, it's got a good sound. You can get really uh, chimey or really mellow, you know, depending on what you're looking to test out of an amp, and uh, all in a really easy to hold and play for a while package. So yeah, that's it. That's the shop. This is where I spend my days, where you come to drop off to me. Hope you like this.